Welcome to another session of our lecture, Innovation Management and Marketing at the Technical University of Lübeck. And uh, last time we started talking a little bit uh, more in depth about uh, promotion. So uh, the promotional mix within the operational marketing. Um, so promotion is one of the key tools uh, within the operational marketing. And we talked about public relations and we talked about um, advertisement in general. And now we arrived at uh, sponsoring. Sponsoring is the often financial support of sports, arts or other institutions, social institutions, can also be museums. Um, and the sponsor in exchange hopes for some kind of image effect, for some kind of awareness effect. And later, of course, there may be also some effect uh, when it comes to turnover. What do you think? Why is um, sponsoring more or getting more important in today's world if you compare it to traditional advertisement what are the advantages of sponsoring and now i am um, i try to make it a little bit more interactive using the chat function here why is sponsoring very important in today's world what is the big difference between sponsoring like uh, in sports and uh, compared to television or compared to radio commercial or compared to print ad so, for example, what is the what is the impact or the effect that uh, companies such as here, uh, Telecom, what do they hope for? Any kind of uh, any kind of clue? What is the big difference? The big difference is it's not perceived as being uh, advertisement. So it's it's or let's put it this way: it's less perceived to be um, to be advertisement. So and uh, what about the audience? The audience is uh, observing, for example, it's it's uh, it's watching a football game or a basketball game, okay, if if that is possible in the future, um, and then they are also. Uh, realizing at least on a subliminal level that there are some uh, brand messages coming across and um, these brand messages are not perceived to be um, advertisement how and they are perceived in a very very uh, enthusiastic and uh, positive uh, atmosphere that is uh, that is the big uh, that is the big thing because if you watch a commercial on television, you know that you're seeing a commercial. And uh, so you're a bit reluctant. So you don't take uh, what is communicated um, seriously, probably. You're not interested. You're walking away. Um, you're not attentive, etc., etc. But if you're watching a football game, a basketball game, or you're going to a concert or whatever, a rock concert, uh, and you're exposed to certain kind of... Um, are you watching a, uh, um, a cinema uh, in, in the cinema? You're watching a movie uh, that is product placement, but it's the same kind of logic here. Uh, you're not realizing that uh, certain kind of products and brands which are placed, which are presented um, because they are sponsored, um, are trying to increase their reputation and image. So. Um, you're less negative as to these kind of brand messages. And that is the big uh, advantage. And this is also the, the, um, the link towards uh, the product placement here as well. So product placement is placing a branded product or a service or a company or um, a location, for example, or a hotel um, in some entertainment format. Uh, so it could be also it could be um, within the game and we talked about that briefly last time uh, in game placement. So also placing products in computer games is a kind of a placement. And here I just uh, chose the example of uh, James Bond, the James Bond movies. And you can see here that Omega uh, started uh, taking over the, um, uh, the Bond uh, placement or placing their products in the Bond movies. Uh, starting with GoldenEye, that was the first one, uh, starring Prius Brosnan. And prior to that, it, uh, there has been there have been several brands, mostly Rolex. And uh, then with GoldenEye, uh, Omega uh, took over. And actually, what you can what you can perceive is here that those products are presented within the plot of the movie. Um, and what is interesting is that um, those kind of products are paid for, right? Uh, so 
Omega is not only equipping the James Bond movies, so is, uh, for example, if you look at Daniel Craig, so is Tom Ford as the tailor. Um, but it is also, like, like I said, it is also bringing across uh, something of the um, yeah, atmosphere, uh, something of the figure of the James Bond um, actor, and it's transferring this kind of an image towards the brand. Um, and this works very well with all kinds of products that are placed in the um, in the Hollywood movies or in other movies, also at Bollywood or wherever. Um, doesn't make any difference, and it works very well. Just think about the Aston Martin that um, that has been in the Bond movies for quite a number of years. Um, there has been a time when you see that uh, also with Brosnan, uh, in which uh, BMW was uh, sponsoring, was placing the product in the Bond. Uh, in the Bond movies, here, for example, in um, this uh, in this scene here, that, that was the new um, 750 uh, car, BMW car, which was placed in the movie. Now, um, <clears throat> there are all kinds of placement in the movie, so it could be a visual placement. So you you are exposed, you see uh, Ford, uh, for example, as a brand being used in Casino Royale. That was the first Bond uh, movie starring uh, Daniel Craig. And uh, you, you also have a verbal placement. So you don't necessarily need to see the brand. So th the brand is just talked about in the, uh, in the movie. And we call it verbal placement. In GoldenEye, for example, um, Denise Richards is asking, uh, or there was a question, I think, from, from, uh, from Bond to Denise Richards, are you feeding your cat with viscous? So it's just viscous, just uh, you don't see the cat, you don't see anything, but uh, it's just a question. And this uh, verbal placement was um, was paid and uh, there are estimates that that, that was about $30,000 just for Bond saying viscous uh, that was paid um, to the producers of the Bond movie, so to, uh, to the broccoli people. Um, and what a rough estimate is that um, the new blockbuster um, movies, not only Bond, but uh, Avengers and, and, and the superhero uh, movies and, uh, and other stuff, Terminator. Um, those uh, movies are very, very expensive. It's up to 200 million, 300 million could be. Um, and 70%, up to 70% of the costs of uh, a Hollywood movie are coming in just via placement. And there is placement in everything. There is also, we also have in novel placement. Probably you're not aware of that. So apart from in movie placement, you also have in game placement. We talked about that, but also in novel placement. So um, in the Dan Brown um, thrillers, uh, Da Vinci Code and um, or the Illuminati, um, in those, uh, those books, for example, um, it is often mentioned that um, the uh, the characters they take out their iPhone and make a phone call or whatever, right? It it explicitly said iPhone. So if it wouldn't be paid placement, then there is no need because there is no link to the plot. Why um, why it should be written that they're taking out the iPhone? So it's a paid placement. You also have a combined placement. Unfortunately, because uh, we are recording and. Uh, it is a little bit difficult now uh, and the quality is not very good. Uh, we cannot embed now the video. The video is embedded, but uh, if I play it, the sound is not very good. And because of the internet connection of, uh, of yours, sometimes it's, it's, it's not running smoothly. So I better describe it. Uh, combined placement is the presentation um, of a brand entering the plot. Uh, basically in the movie. One example, brilliant example, uh, one of my favorite um, comedies is uh, What Women Want, starring Mel Gibson. And uh, Mel Gibson in this movie, he's working in an advertisement uh, agency and in this ad agency, he works on a commercial, on a campaign for Nike. And uh, they're always talking about Nike and, and in the end you see the commercial within the movie that they're doing. Uh, a young woman running down the street and, and then it says no game games just sports and that is very very effective because um this combined placement makes it even more appealing because it is a not coming across as being advertisement and b it's belonging to the plot 
So, um, and, uh, so therefore, the, um, the, the brand really has a function within the plot, which is, of course, then even more compelling. The same applies to the cars being used um, by, uh, by James Bond, if they can, can do all kinds of stuff. Another beautiful, uh, beautiful, beautiful example uh, starring Daniel Craig in uh, Casino Royale. Uh, in Casino Royale, um, Daniel is wearing two pairs of sunglasses by um, Italian uh, brand Persol. Um, now, what is interesting about the two pairs of sunglasses? It is never mentioned that Daniel Craig is wearing Persol. Um, so not one moment in time, but two weeks after the movie premiered, those two pairs of sunglasses, those two specific models were sold out globally. Those two models were sold out globally two weeks after the movie premiered. Um, and nobody was, was holding up a sign and saying, oh, wow, uh, uh, Mr. Bond, what are you wearing? And he's saying, oh, parasol or whatever, right? No, nothing at all. Um, how does it work? Um, so people are, are, are seeing the movie and then they're, they're watching some, some, uh, some stuff on, uh, for example, on YouTube. There's um, a guy, for example, I know, uh, and he runs, and I have it on a later slide, and he runs a movie channel, which is called, or a, a YouTube channel, which is called the James Bond Experience. And in this movie channel, or in this YouTube channel, he's discussing items being used by James Bond. And you can also um, look for a certain kind of uh, internet sites where it says uh, James Bond lifestyle, or uh, these are the products that James Bond is using. But you can also find for other movies, for all kinds of movies, you can see in which hotel has been shot. Um, this kind of a movie. Uh, for example, uh, give another example here. Oh, first let me finish uh, the story with the sunglasses because here you can see this is the Persol uh, case and uh, you can see there's a separate case here for this model here, Casino Royale. And on the, uh, the interesting thing is that on the homepage of Persol, they used it. They said exclusive James Bond sunglasses. So they came out with this kind of a model and um, they advertised it on the uh, on the website meaning also this helps in digital world if you um in the framework of search engine optimization because if you uh if you look for james bond or you type in daniel craig you will also find parasol uh, at some moment in time for example if there is a clever uh, search engine uh, optimization marketing being done um another example i'm giving to you here and just uh, you can try in parallel to find out. Look at the um, polo shirt that uh, that James Bond is wearing. Now, in parallel, I don't know. I know you're all online and you're connected to the computer. Just tr try to find out quickly. What is the uh, polo shirt that uh, James Bond is wearing in Casino Royale? Just who's first? <laughs> we should get a, give extra points for that. What is the... What is the polo shirt that James Bond is wearing in Casino Royale? That is not a normal polo shirt. Of course, he's a British or he's supposed to be a British gentleman. So what kind of brand? And basically the brand has been prominent in, in the Bond movies um, all over the years. Um, so they have been equipping um, Daniel Craig, as they have been equipping um, Sean Connery, Roger Moore, Sunspell, yeah. Yeah, you see, you, you find it, and it's a very specific one. If you go to the Sunspell um, homepage, Sunspell is a, is a company in, uh, in the UK, being there since, I don't know, since 200 years roughly, because they started business in 1870, if I remember that correctly. And if you go to the Sunspell page, you find even on, uh, on the Sunspell page, um, you find this Riviera, it's called the Riviera Polo. And um, you, you see the descriptions, they are exclusively made for Daniel Craig in Casino Royale. Uh, of course, they also made uh, swim shorts for, uh, for Connery. But um, now, <laughs> the, those uh, those polo shirts or the the shirt that uh, Daniel Craig was wearing when he was writing his uh, resignation email uh, to M, yes, to to uh, to his uh, to his boss. Um, that is a gray uh, melange uh, T-shirt that Craig is wearing on the boat 
again, nobody knows it's Sunspell, but people are just Googling that and people are just looking for that. And Daniel Craig is uh, perceived as to be a very, uh, not only attractive, but very, very trendsetting, very, very fashionable uh, kind of a guy. And uh, so that is much more effective in this respect than if you run a, a commercial just advertising Sunspell as a brand and saying, okay, uh, how cool is that? And we have good quality. Um, a lovely story um, is uh, the story of uh, Panerai. I'm a great uh, watch fan and watch lover. And uh, Panerai is an Italian brand. And uh, Panerai started uh, selling watches for the Italian Marine Forces, for the naval uh, divers, for the for the fighters there, for the elite um, uh, unit of the um, of the Italian naval forces. And um, what they did was um, there was uh, first of all uh, there was in 1994 there was a movie called Daylight, and uh, this movie was uh, was being shot in Italy uh, lots of the time. So there were a lot of days uh, it was filmed in Italy, and um, <clears throat> when they did it in Italy. Stallone was running through the uh, through the streets there of Milano and and, and, and Rome etc etc and he was recognizing um, Panerai as as a kind of a brand. They had a, a little shop there, and uh, he stopped and he said, "Oh, what's that?" And and uh, that that looks very masculine. It's 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 very cool uh, cool diving watch here. And they told him, "Yeah, we are doing watches for the Italian Marine Forces." Um, and before he was entering the shop, they sold about 500, 600 watches per year. And he said, yeah, we are shooting a movie here. And yeah, we, we heard about that. Um, <clears throat> we heard about that, Mr. Stallone. And he said, can you do me 50 watches? Can you give me 50 watches for the movie? Five zero watches for the movie. So we'll return that or we'll pay for that. That's fine. And because I love that and I want to wear this watch in the movie. And they made um, the watches for him uh, and they were providing uh, the, uh, They were equipping the movie. They were even doing specific ones. The movie is called Daylight. Look at this one here. This is a very famous one. It's called the Luminar and they call it Daylight. And you can see here above the brand uh, Panerai, it says Sly Tech, Sly Tech. And Sly is the nickname of Sylvester Stallone. After the movie premiered, he was uh, going back to the shop and he bought 100 watches uh, of Panerai. And what was he doing? He was bringing back the watches as presents. So he was, um, he was not selling the watches. He was giving each of his buddies a watch. And his buddies were the action heroes. Arnold Schwarzenegger, Jason Statham, Dolph Lundgren um and, and 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 other superstars and now what happened subsequently that is so interesting in 1996 just one year later schwarzenegger was wearing luminar marina so uh same kind of a watch uh, in the eraser movie uh then also a little bit later in the transporter jason statham super action hero was wearing luminar daylight and san andreas uh, Dwayne The Rock Johnson was uh, wearing the uh, 1950 submersible. Um, and ever since um, the Daylight movie was being shot in Italy, they are selling a couple of thousands of watches to watch enthusiasts. Um, not because they were doing clever advertisement, but because also they were lucky and uh, Stallone was passing by and he was um, he was uh, he found the, these watches striking and he was making them super, super popular. So placement is a very, very, very effective tool. Um, here we have uh, this is due to the new marketing communications landscape we have in today's world. The consumers are better informed than ever before and they can be better informed than ever before because even if you want to find out some some details, for example, you immediately find that out. So, for example, we can do another test. So, um, I was talking about that before. If you tr you try to find out um, in this scene, what was the hotel that Daniel Craig was staying in? In this hotel, in Casino Royale. Can you find it out? Can you try in parallel to, uh, to check it? Which was the hotel that Daniel Craig was staying in? By the way, um, 
you don't um you d there is not a sign of the hotel in the movie but it says uh welcome to the <laughs> mr mr bond and um the um the hotel is shown a couple of times in the uh, in the movie and what is interesting i tell you how the story works and, and how this works if um you're producing a bond movie um, you're going out and saying, okay, we, ha we have Daniel Craig again in another movie and this is the female star and uh, so Splendid, is it? Is it Splendid? Oh, it's on, on the Bahamas. No, it must be another one. Um, actually, it's the Ocean Club. Um, the Ocean Club on the Bahamas. I don't know wh why it says Hotel Splendid. Uh, so it must be the Ocean Club on the Bahamas because uh, this one has been used also in um, Thunderball starring um, Sean Connery, for example. Now, the Ocean Club, it says, welcome to the Ocean Club. And in this uh, hotel, he, he stays with uh, um, Eva Green starring uh so so playing the role of uh, vera lind and um this ocean club uh it, they they applied basically to be the place uh where bond stays because the um uh, the producers are going to the um to the local authorities and uh, they are saying oh yeah we are having a shooting on the bahamas and then they are approaching different kind of hotels which are located on the Bahamas. So they don't care whether they're going to the Ocean Club or Splendid Hotel or whatever kind of hotel there is. But they're saying, oh, we go we're going to be here for seven days and we need accommodation for, I don't know, 50 people. And we are showing the hotel uh, 22 seconds uh, from the front. And then we have a beach, um, beachside view where this famous scene where Bond is coming out of the water. Uh, and um, of course, and we are showing the room, uh, so we need a nice suite for, for Daniel Craig and etc. etc. And then uh, how much are you paying uh, if we have your hotel being the spot on the Bahamas, uh, which is shown, I don't know, for two and a half minutes. And then um, the hotels are offering certain kind of packages to the crew, uh, so to the uh, producers. And then they decide for one hotel where they have this shooting and also sometimes the hotel is coming back and say ah can we have daniel craig i don't know enter the room one more time because we have uh oh he needs to play in the casino and can we show five seconds uh, can we show five seconds more uh a shot of the casino can we have uh, five additional seconds for example and then they say yeah this is another ten thousand dollars and then we can have that so it's a kind also it's a kind of a <laughs> you have to pay for that um of course However, it is very, very, very successful. And you can find basically for every kind of movie, you can find uh, which place it is shot and what are the stars wearing, what sunglasses, cars. Cars are most obvious, but also like said here, this uh, equipment. Of course, it is most powerful. And sometimes this happens as well. Um, in particular, if you look at the Bond movies, um, and me being talking so much about that, I'm, I'm a great fan. Um, for example, um, No Time to Die, uh, the one, uh, the latest and the last one uh, by uh, coming with Daniel Craig. Uh, but due to Corona, it was a little bit postponed. And you can find, um, for example, just look for, um, if you look for, uh, there's a scene, there was uh, a scene of... Uh, Daniel Craig, it is a little trailer. Try to find it in parallel on the internet now. Um, he op he's in the garage and he takes away um, the coating of uh, his Aston Martin and he's wearing uh, a very nice uh, jacket, uh, a tan jacket. This is a, this is kind of a brown color. Um, can, you find, can you find this jacket? Can you find the brand of the jacket? Now, what is interesting about this question is that the film is not even out yet. But um, the demand for this jacket increased by more than 100%. Uh, can you find, uh, you just need to look for Daniel Craig, No Time to Die, Garage, and then Jacket. You find it immediately. Can you tell me the brand? Um, and I'll tell you the story about that. Uh, because in this, in this respect, it's even more powerful because 
Daniel Craig himself, he's a great fan of the brand. And he asked uh, the costume designers to, um, to go through this kind of company and buy those jackets for him. So they bought 50 jackets for him and for the stuntmen. And um, they equipped him and the stuntman with this kind of jacket he's wearing in this teaser, in his trailer. Nobody found out the jacket. Nobody found the jacket. Look for the jacket. <laughs> Garage, Jen Daniel Craig, no time to die. Rogue territory, yeah, that's it. And that is, um, that is uh, for example, that is a brand that is coming from Daniel Craig himself. He's a great fan uh, that, is, that is known. Uh, he's been saying that a couple of times in his interviews. A great fan of Rogue Territory. Um, so am I, by the way. And um, it's a California brand. And then it is even more compelling because <laughs> even though the film is not out yet and people know, ah, Daniel Craig was was asking for the Rogue Territory Wax Ridgeline supply jacket to be worn in No Time to Die in his last movie in this particular scene. Um, the the scale uh, the sales skyrocketed and that was an immediately uh, immediate increase. But there was nobody going to Rogue Territory, by the way. There is a nice interview that um, De, uh, De, David Zeritsky was doing. David Zeritsky runs, I, I was recommending that, the YouTube channel, The James Bond Experience. And he was doing an interview with the Rogue Territory people, with the, with the CEO. And there was no Bond people. There, the Bond people were not really saying, ah, please, uh, we need for the Bond movie, we need 100 jackets or whatever. So it was kind of an anonymous thing. And then it's even more powerful because it's coming across as being more authentic. So I talked a lot of about James Bond. It's time to go on. But I, I think I made it uh, very, very clear how this placement works and why is it so, um, so effective and so powerful. Um, there is more communication than ever before. Less marketing communication is better tailored to the individual uh, consumers. And we have changing communications technology. We're all aware of that. And basically, what are we doing? Uh, if we develop an advertisement strategy, advertisement strategy is comprised of different kinds of steps. First, we need to have an overall strategy. Uh, and from that uh, stage, we are cascading, we are deriving an appropriate strategy, which is comprised of the following steps. Um, we are going to, uh, to go through them uh, in more detail in the, uh, in, the next, uh, in the next couple of slides here. First, you need to identify the target market because um, you need to identify the target audience because if you don't uh, know what the target audience is and if you're not in a position to describe it in a, in a very detailed kind of way, of course, you don't know which channels to choose from. So you need to, uh, to know what will be said, how it will be said, when it will be said, where it will be said and who will say it. So you need to know the target group. That's the first starting point. Then you need to determine the objective. So what, what do you want to accomplish? What do you want to achieve in terms of the, uh, the communication, in terms of the advertisement? Do you want to um, increase market share? Do you want to increase turnover? Do you want to increase, um, I don't know, just image? Uh, do you want to increase the uh, recognition of, uh, of the brand? So it's a, it's a question, what are you want, uh, what do you want to accomplish? So what, what are you doing? Basically, marketers seek a purchase response that results from consumer orientation um, and decision making processes, of course, but not in every respect. So not in all instances is there always um, the intention to increase the turnover. Sometimes, for example, if you think about public relations, you may also place your product or your brand uh, or your organization in uh, a movie, for example, not, not hoping for any turnover increase, but for a brushing up of your image, for, um, I don't know, better communicating what the brand stands for, for example. But basically, um, this is the, 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 the logical chain here from awareness. So people are aware that they, uh, I don't know, they want a new kind of a jacket or a car or they want to go on holiday. And then uh, knowledge is about the, the information search. So they go on the internet and they look for a different kind of uh, service or product provider, providers. And 
if they try out a brand or a service and they kind of like or dislike it and it becomes uh, it becomes a preference to them so brands um, after several kinds of uh, consumption for example they become love brands such as Apple for example such as Harley Davidson for example such as Nike for example there are love brands so people prefer to buy so there's a certain kind of attitude a certain kind of aura around the brand and we said that a brand is a collection of perceptions in the hearts and minds of the customers so therefore there is a kind of a preference uh, being created and uh, a conviction which is a very very strong you know, I'm convinced about the quality I'm convicted I'm convicted to buy it right I'm, I'm doomed to buy it right and uh, this leads to a purchase and also re, uh, repurchase of a product how do you set the budget the budget can be set uh, looking at different kind of methods so one uh, in one instance you can say um, I apply a percentage of sales method which is you see uh, that 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 is what Red Bull is doing Red Bull is saying 20% of all global turnover goes into advertisement so no matter how much turnover we have no matter how much profitability we have or what Coca-Cola is doing 20% competitive parity uh, method is you're comparing your uh, company to comp competitors and say oh how much is Coca-Cola spending on advertisement this year and let's do the same or let's do more for example an objective and task method is you go back to your objective here where is it here determine the communication objective you go back to your objective and um, say okay my objective is to increase turnover by 15 percent by the end of this year or to increase market share by two and a half percent in China by the end of this month and what do I need to do uh, in order to get there so do I have to uh, have radio commercial how many do I need to have or uh, only only online uh, Facebook promotion YouTube or only Facebook okay how much Facebook promotion do we need that was uh, okay I, I was seeing I, I'm, I'm getting that there was a remark on the chat I appreciate that you made a quote last night uh, that a large investment on on cash can anytime crash yeah, yeah 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 that's true um of course and, and and that is what we have in the in the other lectures i was in depth talking about that that we are living in an age of um intangible assets so where intangible assets they 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 rule the world um that has been in the world for a couple of decades already we are all moving into this digital and it's a lot about this um intellectual <clears throat> property that is uh, more and more important just look at uh, I don't know one of the recent oh, recent uh, uh, in the recent history let's put it this way the acquisition of uh, for example of WhatsApp or the acquisition of Instagram by uh, by Facebook one of the best acquisitions in tech history uh, in the last couple of hundred years probably and um, this paid off multiple times and what is it what was Instagram Instagram was nothing more or less than algorithms and, 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 and digital photo album that's it and now it's one of the fastest growing platforms uh, apart from uh, TikTok uh, which is doing very very well I just uh, I'm just uh, compiling an article on uh, on TikTok and I was reading here uh, just with this week I was reading an article on the uh, the queen of TikTok which is Carly uh, D'Amelio I don't know whether uh, my Chinese uh, people know her she's the biggest um tiktok influencer having 50 million uh subscribers 50 million fans on uh, on tiktok so it's a new kind of world like we said uh before so that is of course the most adequate thing to do this objective and task method sets the budget based on what the firm wants to accomplish with the promotion and um let's go on um, designing the message there are strong and weak theories I mentioned that before when we talked a little bit about involvement high versus low involvement if the involvement is high then we have this classic or that was in the past the classic AIDA model when you have um, awareness so you aware of a problem this leads into interest desire and action of buying something and um, 
In the low involvement case, you have this ATR models. We talked about that awareness trial reinforcement. reinforcement. So you try a product here and if or a service, uh, but usually it's with low involvement. So it couldn't be a high investment service here, but um, you try it and then you repurchase that. Um, so your, uh, your image about the brand is reinforced, whether it's positive or negative, um, doesn't make any difference. Okay, now creating the advertising message includes different considerations. One is the tonality, the tone, uh, tone or tonality we call that, whether it's positive, negative, uh, using a lot of pictures, wh whether it's full of humor or it's more rational, uh, it's more uh, using visuals and um, the format. What is the illustration like? What is the tagline? and uh, and the copy strategy then you have to choose the media uh, of course with respect to the target group choosing media personal communication involves two or more people communicating directly with, with each other we know that of course uh, and um, choosing the media is the key thing with respect to the target groups of course because if you don't choose the media in the right appropriate way, you fall short, you fall short because you, people are not exposed to that. So if, I, for example, I want to reach uh, 20 to 29 nine year old, um, uh, I don't know, young, young uh, men, uh, I don't know, uh, earning or uh, being in the first jobs, but earning already a lot of money. Uh, I cannot get too many people if I uh, make a print ad in uh, the Bild Zeitung, so um, or in a classic newspaper probably. So the channel selection, of course, uh, the media selection is based on uh, to a great extent on the uh, on the target group. That is of course clear. Selecting advertising media uh, includes deciding on reach frequency impact. So that is also a very, very important thing because you need to know what is the reach of different kind of media of Facebook, of YouTube with respect to your target group. And you need to de decide on the timing and on the frequency. So when are you showing your commercial to which kind of a people and how often are you doing that? Reach is a very important measure of the percentage of people in the target market who are exposed to the ad campaign during a period, during a certain period amount of time. Frequency is clear. How many times is an average person exposed to the message? And impact is the qualitative value of a message exposure through a given medium. So whether there is some uh, uh, effect, for example, on brand recognition, that's the impact. Selecting media vehicles now involves decisions presenting the media to the selected target audience, to the target customer. And it must consider the message's impact, effectiveness and cost. So when deciding on this timing, uh, we have to consider seasonality, for example, because there are, uh, there's different kind of sales, as we all know, in uh, during Christmas time or uh, there are certain kind of days when uh, there is a big, big uh, uh, surplus or a big increase in demand. For example, Singles Day, uh, for example, Black Friday or Cyber Week. And the pattern of advertisement, is it conti continuously, right? Is it, we have to think about the scheduling within the given period and pulsing, which is, unevenly scheduling within a, uh, a, a given period. So pulsing is always uh, then it's, uh, pulsing like that. So it's it's been launched and then it's taken back, then it's uh, been launched again. But continuity, con continuity is really scheduling within uh, a given period. These are the media and media classes uh, you can choose from. Basically, um, now here print is one. Print is on the downside. Um, so basically, uh, print is losing importance. The exemption being special interest magazines. Special interest is an exemption. Why is that? Why do you think that special interest magazines 
are still kind of significant uh, when it comes to print campaigns and uh, advertising campaigns in general. Do you have any clue why special interest magazines are still important? We have in, in Germany, for example, we have one of the biggest um, magazine markets on the planet. We have a magazine for every kind of um, fish and for every kind of fishing we have. So, uh, <laughs> so there are more than 10 magazines we have just for fishing, just for fishermen. And um, why are they still relevant? They are relevant because they allow you to very specifically target certain kind of customers. So if you're, um, I don't know, selling equipment for uh, people who want to go fishing, then of course, if you are selecting this kind of media, uh, you can be sure that you're, you're reaching those kind of people. If you uh, just place an ad in the newspaper, um, you can also reach some kind of people who are interested in fishing, but um, the, the spread is, uh, is very much uh, bigger. It's bigger. So uh, that is the comparison here. If you um, go into this special interest magazines, it's more like um, this, the sniper strategy, sniper. Uh, so you're more precise in really addressing people. And um, the, newspa the newspaper, for example, it's less specific. Okay, there are also specific newspapers, but in general, print is losing significance. Um, outdoor is, uh, is kind of staying flat. Uh, and what is, what is, of course, is gaining more and more importance is electronic media. TV also remaining at a very high level globally. But of course, uh, in general, new media is on the rise in all kinds of categories. So whether it's mobile, whether it is, uh, it is internet um, and so on and so forth. We can see it here. That is, uh, that is latest numbers uh, for Germany, for the German market. You can see here that in 2016, uh, roughly that was the uh, the big uh, change here when digital uh, communication became more important than the traditional television campaign um, television is still the most important single uh, medium but um, if you put together all uh, digital so meaning website meaning mobile uh, meaning mailing etc Digital is, is is already more important than uh, television. You see, the big the big losers are the print uh, the print magazines. So newspapers, magazines, not the special interest, but the the uh, the newspapers and the magazines. The others are kind of radio, see radio, cinema, outdoor. They're kind of flat, so they they're not dramatically changing over the years. But the biggest change is, of course, if you look at the television, if you look at um, the uh, the digital. Ah, oh, these are some kind of campaigns, and that is not very good now. Um, that is the downside, of course, of this uh, this kind of a format. Uh, so it is it is very um, bad quality if I now try to play it. But let me quickly explain that. Um, that is an example for award-winning effective direct marketing campaign. That is a company here, Austria Solar. They are doing um, solar energy and solar plants. And what they did was they had their annual report. Um, uh, it's, it's an old uh, classic uh, advertising campaign in 1999. Had it had been printed on specific paper. And uh, if you open, if you try to read uh, the numbers, it was invisible. So you couldn't see anything. You can only see the report if sunlight um, uh, is, is coming onto the pages. So if it's lit by the sun, you can see the, the, um, the, uh, the printing is coming out. So that is very, very clever. And this was sent to uh, specific investors, to clients um, all over the world uh, of Austria, Austria Solar. Very clever idea. Okay, unfortunately, we cannot look into that. I, I show you some uh, some more award-winning examples of outdoor advertisement now. Here, one example includes uh, McDonald's. McDonald's uh, with his uh, French fries here. You see they illuminating. They're going up. So my, my text marker is <laughs> is not that good here. Um, so they're going up here in in the into the air. This uh, symbolizing the French fries, best fries on the planet. 
Uh, that's a lovely uh, outdoor advertisement by McDonald's. That is the Axe Effect, or in some countries it's called Lynx. Um, that is a simple message. So not, uh, again, be aware that um, not the explicit benefit of the product are in the foreground, but it's more the implicit benefit. Hi, um, here you get a nice, uh, interesting, attractive lady. So you're attractive to the opposite sex. That is the X effect. So it's not smelling, um, smelling uh, sexy, but it's really um, coming across as sexy, attractive. And these are doors you can go through at different kind of airports. Uh, they were installing that. Yes, uh, unfortunately, um, so it doesn't make sense. But here I can show you some more examples uh, for our winning print campaigns here. Um, that is lovely, uh, a lovely, very, very clever print ad from um, um, coming from Land Rover, Land Rover. And they have the slogan of go beyond. So go beyond boundaries. And this reminds, of course, of um, uh, this reminds us, of course, of the famous movie, The Truman Show. Truman Story, I think Truman Show is the right one. The movie starring uh, Jim Carrey. And in the Jim Carrey movie, he is sailing with a boat um, to the end of the world. And then he realizes he's just um, an actor in a, in a TV show. And um, that, of course, perfectly illustrates what the brand identity is about, right? Going beyond boundaries, going beyond boundaries. So being individual, um, doing what the others are not doing. So it's really a sports utility V. And so it's not really a sports utility V. It's not a classic SUV. It's more really an off-roader where you can really go to the end of the world. And uh, that is perfectly illustrated here. One of my all-time favorite campaigns uh, is the baby campaign from Evian. Now, if you look at the Evian example here, what are they suggesting? What is their point here in this Evian campaign? What is the value proposition of Evian uh, in this campaign, which has been running for a couple of uh, couple of years already? And what is interesting about the campaign is that um, the campaign is also accompanied by social media, by a lot of social media. Um, movies uh, um, using our on the YouTube channel and it's very successful. It's one of the most successful uh, campaigns of all time or promotions of all time. Nobody, nobody, any clue? Okay. So basically, if you look at the brand here, the, the brand logo, what is it suggesting here? That's it. Like it's mirrored, right? So there's a little, uh, there's a mirror here and the, the suggestion is, of course, that um, if you're she's looking into the mirror and she sees her younger self um, and uh, if she's consuming, if you're drinking Evian, uh, you're living young, you appear to be young. And that is um, that is a very, very, very good, clever message because they are not saying oh, that this is refreshing. Right. Uh, so it, <laughs> it kills thirst. So Evian kills thirst. Of course it does, because that is what every uh, drink, uh, what the main function of drinks, of course, are to kill thirst. But what they are focusing on is um, not the explicit, but the implicit benefit of the product. And therefore, this campaign is so successful. And therefore, Evian is so successful as a company uh, for a couple of decades. Another one, very, very clever, award winning campaign from PlayStation Portable. Uh, you can keep the children quiet. Uh, even if they get an injection by a doctor, um, if you just give him a PlayStation Portable. So, and in the end, you need to evaluate the effectiveness and return on advertisement, uh, right? So, because there's a lot of money going into advertisement. It's very, very expensive. In particular, for example, if you place an ad during Super Bowl. So, there can be a communication effect. So, this is indicating whether the ad and media are communicating the ad, me ad message well, so in an appropriate way. And um, this could be tested before and after the ad runs. And of course, what most people are after is sales and profit effects. So you compare past sales and profits with past expenditures or through experiments. However, 
what you never know is even let's assume you're running a commercial now and past profits have been X and now profits are going up 10%. You never know how much of the increase is due to the campaign that you're running. So there is a correlation. Of course, there is a correlation. There is a positive correlation. There's not a negative, hopefully. Uh, but you can never say that, uh, I don't know, I'm spending one additional euro um, on advertisement. You cannot say this is generating so and so uh, much percent increase in sales or profitability, unfortunately. So what are ways actually uh, psychologically and visually to attract and activate the customer? So the customer need to be uh, aware, there need to be internal attraction. So of course, if somebody's sleeping in front of the television, if somebody is not, not actively or um, passively watching commercial, then there could, uh, couldn't be any kind of activation. Um, external attractions are emotional attractions. And here we have, um, the uh, scheme of childlike characteristics that is what we know from biology and psychology that this is very much uh, appealing in particular to women all over the world by the way and uh, that is by the way also the um, uh, the effect or the psychological um, plan that was going into the design of the bmw mini um, and coupe mini cooper uh, car because the Mini Cooper, if you look at the Mini Cooper, it resembles, from proportionally wise, resembles a child. And um, that was explicitly given to the designer of the Mini as a task. He should, uh, that, that, was, that was told to him, he should apply the scheme of childlike characteristics to the car. I don't know why, <laughs> why this is the reason, but... Uh, this may be part of the effect that uh, the Mini is more to more than 70% driven by women. Can also be sexual uh, attractions, erotic attractions, um, explicitly or more at a, at, a, at, a, at a subliminal level. Then, of course, apart from these emotional attractions, you can use cognitive attractions, surprises, conflicts, uh, etc or physical attractions, outstanding size and color of an ad. So these are all TV commercials um, and, uh, and uh, big cinema commercials that, uh, that are award winning. And uh, unfortunately, we cannot share that uh, in this kind of format here now. And probably also it would have been cut out because there's some kind of music and YouTube would cut it out. So we cannot go through that, unfortunately. Um, but I show you how um, big uh, or how little differences um, in the design of an ad can have a big super big impact now if you compare the left and the right uh, ad what is the difference between the left and the right one if you look at the woman do you realize any difference here what is the difference between yeah why she look why she's looking at yeah very good Celine um, now in the left uh, image here, she's looking at the product. Here, she's looking at the, uh, the consumer or the viewer, right? Um, now, and this is a so-called heat map. And the heat map is showing how long the eyes of uh, an observer are focusing on which regions of the ad, of uh, whether it's print ad or um, internet ad, doesn't make any difference here. Here you see a strong focus, very, very deep red here on the slogan. Here there's very little focus on the slogan. And here there's a, a strong focus on her eye. And that, but there's also strong focus, a kind of a strong, much stronger focus on the product itself than here. And here there's also focus on the product. Here there's very, very little focus on the product. So you can see that there's a dramatic effect. Uh, just if you change the composition of the ad uh, in a minor way this um, this is the big challenge we all have we are all exposed to you are exposed to i'm exposed to even if you look at lectures such as this one here there are thousands of lectures and thousands and thousands of professors that uh, i don't know upload videos on on the youtube so we have more information than we can ever consume just looking at, um, at some kind of indicators or interesting facts about Germany. 
We have uh, about 8,000 different magazines. I was mentioning that before. Actually, it's the second biggest magazine market on the planet after the United States of America. We have uh, more than 300 different newspapers and there are 25 national television transmitters and more than 600 uh, channels. I'm not talking about streaming now. The problem is that only 6% uh, when it comes to advertisement, TV advertisement, watch the full spot in Germany. 87 don't look at the spot at all. 80% regard TV advertisement as being annoying. This is also because, unfortunately, German television advertisement is not that cleverly done. So in a lot of instances, in a lot of cases, it's not that appealing. Um, there is a, a competition, a global competition, which is called the Cannes Roll. And at Cannes, uh, the Lions are awarded to uh, to advertising agencies who um, made very, very uh, sophisticated and excellent um, pro, uh, pro, uh, promotions or products um, and uh, communicated um, accordingly. And um, if you look at the Cannes Lions, uh, all the Anglo-American, also the prices are mostly won by Anglo-American companies, sometimes also by German companies, but working for American, working, working for American companies. So therefore also 70%, this is a bit of an explanation, consider TV ads to be boring and a lot of people switch channels during ad blocks. And of course, as you all know, I'm being uh, much younger than I am you're uh, most likely uh, not watching TV any uh, at all uh, anymore because you're watching Netflix and uh, and YouTube and Amazon Prime or, or whatever kind of uh, kind of format so the uh, the reason is or the the effect is that only 1 to 2% of all information is actually perceived by the um, by the receiver so even though uh, a person is uh, looking at a spot Sometimes they're reading, reading newspapers and parallel, oh, there's advertisement, or they skip the advertisement uh, because they are just watching um, a recording. So they record a TV show and then they're watching it afterwards. And um, so a perception is very, very selective. And uh, we can find it out uh, just looking at the little game here. Um, if you know this little game, you're not allowed to play along with me. But now here, please read the following sentence carefully. And count how many F the time, uh, uh, how many times uh, the letter F is in the sentence here. Finished trials are the result of years of scientific study combined with the experience of years. Who's first? How many times is the letter F in the sentence here? F like Friedrich. Who's first? Six, that's a bit too much, isn't it? Three. Yeah, most people actually, yeah, most people actually see three. Um, but my friend Habib is correct. Um, so actually, um, you will be surprised to see that because the people who count three, they have this finished files. But what they, um, <laughs> and scientific, but what they overlook is the off, this off, and that off. So actually, it's six. Actually, it, it says six. So uh, <laughs> that is a funny, that is a funny thing. So we are all very, very much selective when it comes to perception. This funny little, uh, <laughs> funny little game here. So um, as a consequence, you have to be very, 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 very thorough when composing your message, when communicating. Um, you have to trigger the emotions of people. And um, unfortunately, like I said, uh, like I said before, we cannot look uh, at the cases and the best practice examples I, I brought with me, at least not the uh, the movies here. So I quickly go over that um, because I have so many um, examples, best practices here. Okay. Probably um, one. Uh, or it would be good to end it here because um, now this is a different kind of section within communication because uh, Coca-Cola, uh, they have a strategy which they call, we want to move from creative uh, excellency towards content excellency. Um, so um, they are uh, focusing more on content marketing. Content marketing is completely new 
I, and different kind of subject within promotion, uh, which is not telling so much about the product itself, but uh, thinking about a wider content that is applicable and interesting for the um, for the audience to be observed. We can see that um, being done in a very very clever way by companies such as Red Bull. Uh, and if you go to the Red Bull homepage, you, you rarely find any kind of a promotion for the product. You see, ah, oh, these are the best, uh, I don't know, uh, rock and roll songs right now, or you, you find some information about uh, deep sea diving or about, uh, I don't know, uh, people sailing uh, across the Atlantic, etc., etc. So, but that's, it's not saying, please buy our product. So, and this is what, what is good about, about our product. They're providing content also about computer games because they know that gamers are drinking, uh, they're consuming energy <laughs> drinks like water. And uh, because they know that, they provide a lot of content, which is not directly related to the product, but indirectly, and they use that uh, to promote and to uh, communicate the brand identity. Okay, uh, that's about uh, already a, a session which we did. Um, thanks very much for your time. Thanks very much for your attention. Unfortunately, like I said, in, in promotion would have been much more interesting to look at all these kind of uh, commercials, but um, uh, one copyright, copyright reason why and quality uh, techn technological wise, it doesn't make sense to play the videos and then you only have the audio um, being transmitted by the uh, PC and then it's not so running so smoothly. So that is the reason why we fo were focusing on me telling you uh, about some kind of campaigns in, in particular, for example, James Bond, but also uh, about uh, about Panerai and why we are not watching or we're not watching the commercials. Thanks very much. I stay in line, of course, um, for a couple of more minutes, uh, but I end the recording here. Thanks very much. And I see you for another session next Friday. Cheers and bye-bye.